Welcome back to the homestead guys. We're out at the truck and we have all of our supplies out here. You can see everything. Got everything, seeds and electrical stuff and everything to get our methane situated in here. So we've been doing a lot of cleaning and getting a lot of space prepared. I just sowed, well I guess I sowed over here closer to my peppers I had put some of my seven top turnips because those are very productive and I like to get those going we finally got some shade from the Sun it's been really hot we've been out riding around and messing around and just kind of messing around with water all day because it's been so darn hot so we've been doing experiments right here I showed a little short on that I'm gonna do a little more talking on that in another video but we're over here at our methane capture tank and it is basically 99% set up and I want to talk about a few things and show the rest of the pieces that we've ordered that we didn't have when we did the first part of this video. So looking at this system as a whole we have one nice contained system and looking down here we've got our drum to catch we've got our nice capture tube so this inflatable storage tank this is going to inflate we've got this line we've got everything sealed up we've got clamps on it all everything's nice and tight so we've done a lot of work to get this all situated I just wanted to explain that process and we had like a 17 minute video so I wanted to come out here and do a shorter video once this is put together and talk about what we're gonna feed this so so we've got everything situated on our little scrubber basically you can see where the hose goes straight down we've got a double-sided nipple running directly from our methane here so this one is directly running right into our scrubber system so this little bubbler is going to filter all the methane through here and allow it to flow through the rest of our system here which we're going to show so it runs down to this little T here with this T fitting so the line from our bubblers running down in and then we can see one line runs back behind the barrel and one line is running up to this ball valve so the one line that runs around the back of the barrel is actually running to that little donut that's something we had already covered so that we know and that is basically the rest of the system up to here this is purely experimental and has just gotten set up basically so we do not have any inputs in here yet so we have everything cinched down and tightened so this ball valve we had just hooked up with our own little piece of metal strip that secures this like a little fixture so this is nice and tight we're able to open and close that at will and this is kind of experimental right now it's not fully hard lined down so this is kind of just hanging here and doesn't look the best right now from a far perspective the line from the ball valve is running up to our stove and here is our little burner we're able to control the air and the fuel blowing into it by twisting this little stick at the end here. So we picked up this little Bunsen burner, very, very cheap. It was about 20 bucks. I didn't really think that was too bad of an investment. You can see our lines running in there. Nice, nice little design. Looks like one from science class when we were in like seventh, eighth grade there. So very cool that is just kind of sitting here right now i ran it over here i had left myself plenty of line so i could kind of fix this and keep it over there because 99 percent of the time this is going to be closed off and we'll be sitting here with it closed so this entire system is going to inflate this tube this inner tube does not have the valve stem in it. We showed that in the first part of the video. So that is going to freely inflate and deflate as we allow pressure to flow out to our burner or as the pressure is flowing from our tank through the bubbler into the storage tank. So now that I've covered everything, let's talk about some of the inputs that we're going to be putting in here so we can actually burn a flame from this. I have this as an experiment. I'm looking at other burners that are a little bit bigger. So we'd be able to use a larger burner for actually boiling water or cooking food and stuff like that later into the winter. So the inputs we're looking to put into this system are great methane creators and methane builders. So we want a lot of waste. We want cow waste, we want pig waste, we want alpaca waste. My wife works at an alpaca sanctuary so we may be able to pick up some of their waste and funnel it in here. And with this system we're going to be able to put 
right down here underneath this cap we'll be able to basically dump it in with a funnel and have a liquid slurry going in and it will always be a liquid input we'll add water or urine or whatever to the actual mixture to make it a slurry it's always going to be a liquid going in or some type of liquid like mixture so I'm not sure if we're gonna put human waste in here or not I'd like everybody's thoughts on that what do you think about putting our own waste I got my two sons they would love to do it so if you guys want to see us put our own waste in there we'll do it and we'll burn the flame from our own waste because we talk about that all the time we also have dogs my wife's looking to get goats and stuff like that so we've got a lot of methane inputs and we can create a lot of slurry ourselves with a lot of the green waste and we can make a lot of slurry matter ourselves with just green waste and stuff like that just putting stuff in buckets and sealing them with some water and basically chopping everything up and you can put your own inputs as long as it's small enough that it's going to be able to flow out of our tube and into our waste bucket we will be able to get away with it and everything should break down pretty well we keep it pretty warm in the greenhouse and it's got a good sunny location so putting all of those inputs in should break down and build up very fast. So we'll be bringing an update on all of this methane and the capture and the system as a whole once I get this a little bit further down, maybe a month from now or so. Maybe even before that, I might show some of the inputs and the first slurry and all of that because we're gonna use a lot of water and there's a lot of water in the system. We're gonna use our own urine for sure. I Stay tuned for all the updates here as we bring a lot of stuff pertaining to winter time and what we got going here and all of the experiments we're going to have. So we're keeping ourselves very busy and if anybody has any suggestions for us, definitely drop in the comments below. We're having a lot of fun with this one and I can't wait to actually burn some methane. We've tried this for a couple years now with not the best experiment and not the best start. So we feel like we've got a very good system here and we feel like this is going to perform for us. So everybody stay tuned for all the updates on this methane and all of the other stuff we've got coming pertaining to heating the greenhouse throughout the winter. And I'd like to thank all of the new subscribers we've gotten recently. We've been doing really well with finding new people, finding us. So it's very, very good. And we're finding a lot of local people from our market too. So it's really great to see everybody coming together on this community where we can grow throughout the winter.